say is, is. Prosperous. prosperous. Now, do you have a religious mentality, a poverty mentality, or a kingdom mentality? If you have a kingdom mentality, you have a prosperous mentality. Somebody say, I'm kingdom I'm mentality. mentality. I have a prosperous mentality. That means everywhere you go, you expect the best. Even if it doesn't go your way, you expect it to eventually go your way. Even if the door's shut, you say, praise God, because another door's opening. <laughs> Come on, act like we're a kingdom mentality. Are you with me now? It's not the poverty's mentality. It's not, oh, the glass is half empty. I don't know if we're going to make it. It's not the grasshopper mentality of the Hebrew spies that didn't go into the promised land because of their thinking. It's the land of Joshua and Caleb. It's the mentality of a Joshua and Caleb that said, if God said it, I don't care what it looks like. I believe it's for me, and I'm going to walk in that thing. Somebody say kingdom mentality. Kingdom. Okay. When the children of Israel came out of slavery, out of bondage, which is part of the call of God on this ministry, the whole the way we started, it was 16 years ago now, God spoke to me and said, I want you to go back to the city of Whittier, and, and first of all, I didn't want to come to Whittier because people didn't, want me, want, people didn't want me here before I was a Christian. They wanted me dead here. So I was afraid to come back. And then God says, don't worry, they're all dead that were after your life. And they were. I'm not saying God killed them. I'm just saying they're not here no more. Something happened. I mean, you live that lifestyle, that's what happens. So I said, okay, I'll go back, God. And then God told me what to preach when I got back. He said, when you come back to Whittier, I want you to tell the Pharaoh of Whittier, to tell him his time is up and he has to let my people go. Yeah. And I took that and it was weird because the Lord told me from number one, religion, religion. And I think a lot of poverty is connected to religious beliefs. Like money's evil or something. Money's not evil. It's the wrong relationship with money that's evil. And when you have a wrong relationship with money, then it could become evil. But when you have a healthy relationship with money, it becomes a blessing and you could become a blessing, like Jesus. The Bible says in Acts 10, 38, that Jesus went about doing good. That word good means he was a philanthropist. I mean, he wasn't broke. You don't have a, an accountant that travels with you all the time named Judas if you're broke. And he's still, the joker's still in money, and you've still got enough to be a philanthropist. No, the Bible said that wealthy women followed him and supported him in his ministry. Come on, wealthy women. Three of you. That was your time to shout, girls. You're like... Come on. Stop drinking the hate <laughs> Say, that's me. I'm a wealthy woman. That's what I'm talking about. Some of you are single and you're waiting to get married so you can, you know, be successful. Devil's a liar. You're successful now. You buy your own house, your own car, your own lamps. Get your own lamps. Come on, somebody. <laughs> no? All right. Well. So Jesus was a philanthropist. It says he went about doing good. It literally means he was helping the people in their need. Philanthropy. So he, people were hungry, he fed them. If they needed clothing, he clothed them. If they needed housing, he housed them. So he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. But that's the ministry of Jesus Christ, to do good. Amen? And part of the calling of Freedom Christian Center is to let my people go from religion, from addiction, from bondage but also from financial bondage. <laughs> Say it. Let my people go from financial bondage. And you know, I grew up in poverty, so I know what that spirit is. And it's not a good thing. God doesn't want his people in poverty. He wants that to be broken off your life so you could be a blessing in somebody else's life. Somebody say a kingdom mentality is prosperous. And remember, the typification of the exodus of Egypt from Pharaoh was the, also the typology of our New Testament salvation. Pharaoh represents the devil. Moses represents our intercessor, Jesus. And he goes to Pharaoh and says, let him go. And then ba God backs it, and he has to let the people go. Watch well, what happened with Jesus. When we call on the name of Jesus, Pharaoh, demonic power, has to let us go. When you said, Jesus, come into my life, no devil in hell was going to be able to stop it. Can I get an amen? Can I get a witness? And so, and so that, that's a typology of our New Testament salvation. So when they came out, they came out of bondage emotionally. 
They came out of bondage spiritually. They came out of bondage physically. But keep reading, it also says they came out of bondage financially. It says that when they came out, there was not one sick among them. Watch me. And they came out with silver and they came out with gold. Some of you have come out with your healing, but you haven't come out with your money. You have to come out with everything. If you want freedom. Come on, clap like you're coming out with everything. Look at your neighbor say, you're coming, tell you, you're coming out with everything the devil stole. Because for 400, for 400 successive generations, for 400 years, Pharaoh was building his kingdom on the back of the Hebrew slaves, God's people. And they, and they thought that God forgot about it, but God doesn't forget about anything. He's an interest keeper, so he kept interest for 400 years. And when it was time for them to come out, God said, now bankrupt Egypt. And when they came out, they came out with Egypt's wealth. The wealth of the wicked was stored up for the righteous. Come on. Come on. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to truck along because we're going to hit something here. They came out bankrupt. Egypt never recovered from that. And it wasn't just, God didn't just prosper them coming out. Then he was going to take them to another land of prosperity where giants lived in that land. And the giants thought they owned it. Giants built it. Giants raised it. Giants built the house. Giants did all of it. And God said, in my time, you're going to take all the territory from the giants. So not only am I prospering you when you're coming out of bondage, I'm prospering you when you're selling. I'm going to prosper you when you get in. God is a God of abundance, and that's the Old Testament. Don't you tell me God's better in the Old Testament than he is in the New Testament. If he prospered them under an old covenant and we got better promises, how many know God is going to prosper? Come on, somebody clap like God's going to prosper us in the New Covenant. All right. Now, now we got that established. Let's go. Somebody say prosperity, prosperity. is always on four levels. And we, you have to deal with each level because if not, you're not going to understand prosperity and you'll get frustrated because you're going to think it's going to come one way or this way. But it, you have to cover all four dynamics in order to walk in the prosperity of God. Number one, prosperity. Let's read 3 John chapter 2. 3, 3 John 1, 2. This is John pr uh, praying, saying a prayer for the church. Now, when I went to Bible college, they tried to teach us that this is just a little, little opening, like a poem, like how you doing. But I thought, th that's the devil, man. God, God's not going to put that in the Bible to be like, oh, that's nice, but it's not for you. No. It's like if John walked in here today, John, this guy, John, not your brother, John, or your, <laughs> your boyfriend, John. Come on, somebody. Or your son, John. I'm talking about John, this John, John the beloved, John the revelator, I call him. John, who was so anointed by God that they tried to burn him alive in oil to, mar to martyr him, and the oil couldn't burn him. He was so anointed. So the emperor got fed up with him. He said, we can't even burn this guy to death. So just to send him to an island called Patmos. He goes to the island of Patmos, and guess what happens there? He gets the revelation, all 22 chapters. He gets the beginning, he gets the conditions of the church. He gets the beginning of time. He gets the end of time. He gets the Armageddon. He gets it all. I mean, this is John. So if this, it's one thing if Benny wants to pray for me. I'd be happy. Thank you, Benny. But if Con Lotto, you want to pray, I'd be, I'd be happy for that. But if John says, I'm going to pray for you, how many know you're like, Oh, come on, somebody. I mean, John walks up in here. They try to burn him with oil. He saw the whole world, the end of the world, the revelation. I mean, John, John walked with Jesus. He walked with him. And John's funny because he said, I'm the apostle whom he loved. So John was funny. <laughs> he wrote that about himself. <laughs> what about Peter, James, and, you know, Peter, James, and Luke, and all that? I know, but I'm the one he loved. Come on now. <laughs> and we call him the apostle of love. And John says, beloved. First, if he, John told me, beloved, I'll be like, <laughs> and he says, I'm praying for you, Jason. I'm praying that you may prosper. John? Yes. In all things. In all things? And Jason. Keep it coming, John. Be in health. Woo! Come on. And Jason, as. Your soul prospers. Soul, it's actually two Greek words, pneuma, it's spirit and soul. So the Greek, they don't have a word to define spirit and soul like we have in English. So they just say soul. But it's actually spirit, in, inward man, born again spirit, spirit of man, candle of the Lord. It's also soul, mind, will, emotion. So you have to break it down like that so you understand prosperity. Because it com prosperity comes in four different levels. It comes in uh, spirit, soul, body, 
finance. We're going to break it down. Are you with me now? The pastor's teaching. Let's go. Someone say, number one, spirit. And I call it living the spirit. Living the spirit-filled, spirit-led life is the best and the most fulfilled life. Okay? The Bible says, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Which is, what it said, why? Because tonight is lifestyle of freedom. And we're going to be praying for students tonight to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. To be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? And many of them will be filled. They'll speak in tongues for the first time. It'll be glorious. But God doesn't want them to have one encounter of being filled with the Spirit. And that's it. You got the Holy Spirit. You got filled. No. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is more than just speaking in tongues. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is a lifestyle. It's, it literally means be filled and 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 then and get filled again and get filled again. Come on, act like we want to be spirit filled. So John is saying, if you're going to walk in prosperity, you got to be spirit filled and you got to stay spirit filled. So God's not going to prosper dry Christians. So when you see a dry, carnal, fleshly Christian prospering, the most of the time they're not doing it God's way, they're doing it their own way. That's why if you investigate many of Christians who have financial prosperity and they didn't do it God's way, they're in the flesh, you'll notice they have sorrow still in their lives. God doesn't want you to prosper financially and your marriage is in bad shape or your body's messed up or your kids are messed up. No, God wants to prosper you in every single area of your life. The blessing of the Lord makes a man rich and adds no sorrow. Come on, clap like we're going to go. Let's keep going. I'm going to keep going. And not only the spirit-filled life, but also the spirit-led life. Read the scripture in Romans 8, 14. It says, as many as are led by the spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Now, that word son is it's a very specific word because you could be a baby of God, a little baby in the Lord, born again. You could be a child of God. But son speaks of maturity. So the Bible says when you are led by the spirit of God, you come in into what a place of maturity. And the place of maturity is where God can now trust you with mature blessing. See, the reason God can't prosper every Christian is they're not mature enough. They're not led by the Spirit of God. Some people are led by opportunity. They're led by slick talking. They're led by what looks to be a blessing, and sometimes it's not a blessing at all. I've seen people step right out of God's will, move out of town, go do this, take this job, do this, and ne God was never in it. And you look back five, ten years later, and you realize it was the enemy setting them up because they weren't led by the spirit of God. They were led by people. They were led by emotion. They were led by opportunity. But we're not led by any of those things. We are led by the spirit of God. This is why it's very important that we disciple people when they first get saved and we begin to teach them, don't follow me, you follow me like I follow Christ. And you teach them how to learn to be learned to be led by their spirit in every area. How many people have gotten to relationships that eventually hurt them because God never told them to get into that? But because they didn't know how to be led by their spirit, they were only led by their feeling and their emotion, they end up going out with somebody that they were never supposed to go out with because they weren't being led by their spirit. They were being led by their flesh. I'm getting three claps and a half an amen, but this is a good word anyway. Because we're talking about prosperity, right? We're still talking about prosperity, right? As your what? Soul prospers. So you got to be spirit-filled, spirit-led for God to be able to trust us with wealth. Because if we're not spirit-filled and spirit-led, we'll replace God like that. If God gives an immature carnal Christian that's not in the spirit, all in the flesh, and he starts blessing your life, you know, it won't, it'll only be a matter of time before the thing he gave you will replace him. Whether that be a spouse, children, finance, an education, a house, a car, things. If you're not spirit-filled and spirit-led, you'll replace him. So he has to put blessing on hold until you qualify for it. I got one clap. You know who's clapping? Those who know what I'm talking about. Those that are in it are talking about what? I thought God was like a magic genie, like Aladdin. Just rub the bottle and give me everything I want. Doesn't work like that, son. Don't work like that. John said, don't work like that. John said, God prosper you in all things. John said, and be in health as you prosper on the inside. So prosperity God's way doesn't start from the outside in. It starts from the inside out. 
Well, that's much better. Why? Because God is too wise to lock your prosperity up in the, in the opinions of other people. Because some people don't even believe in you. But God believes in you, and he knows if I can get it in you, I can get it to you, and I'll get it through you. Come on, this is good teaching today. I'm going to keep going because we're running out of time. Took too much, I took too long there. Number, the second one is soul prosperity. Say soul prosperity. And this is the power of lifting every limit and insecurity. Paul said, be not conformed to this world. So he says the world is a con artist. Con form. So they have a con, a lie, and they form you into a lie. And before, when all of us came to Jesus, we had, we had lies in our mind. Some of us still do. Con, tricked, into a form. This is who you are. Your, your skin color, your, your background, where you grew up. This is who you are. But when God wants to break you out of the box like he did Israel, man, the first thing that the ten spies said is, we're not able. We're like grasshoppers. We don't have what it takes. But the two, the two spies, Joshua and Caleb, didn't allow what Pharaoh did to them and the taskmasters to limit their mentality. They said, hey, we went through it, but that's not who we are. We are what God said we are. And if God says we're giant killers, then we be giant killers. Come on, somebody. Do I got any giant killers in the house? So he says, do not be conformed to this world. So when I first came to the Lord, I had all these insecurity, these hang-ups, these limitations, these fears. Even when God said, I'm going to do these great things in your life, it's like, what are you talking about? You don't understand who I am. I'm not able. And all of God's men done, have done that at one point. Moses said, I'm not able. I stutter. He said, send somebody else. Uh, was it uh, 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 Jacob's is a trickster? Uh, 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 Gideon tells him, you know, I'm the weakest uh, of my family, and my own family's from Manasseh. They're like from the hood, and nothing good comes out the hood, and we're nobody. And God's like, shut up, man. You're a mighty man of valor. But until God was able to get that into Gideon and get that into Moses and get that into these great men, they couldn't do what God called them to do. So God takes you through a season of rearranging your thought processes, of how you think about yourself, how you perceive life. And he begins to systematically eradicate out of our lives the things that will hinder the blessing of God from flowing now and in the future. Like insecurity, like jealousy, like fear, like doubt. Come on, clap like God's doing a work in your mind. This is the great Pauline revelation, right? The renewing of the mind. He said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. Metamorphosized. When a caterpillar turns into a butterfly, a worm becomes a soaring butterfly. The transformation happens in the mind. He said, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind that you may know and prove what is God's good, acceptable, and perfect will for your life. What's God's perfect will for your life? That your spirit, man, would be filled and led. That your soul would be restored. That your body would be healed. And that you would prosper in every... Come on, clap like we're going to adapt our thinking to God's will. This is why when I say things like get to lifestyle of freedom and people reject it, I realize they're rejecting a process of metamorphosis because it's not easy to let the word of God challenge our thinking. Sometimes we'd rather stay in, in Lodabar and in bondage because it's comfortable even though we know there's more to us than meets the eye like a transformer. We know there's more greatness in us where we don't want to break out because of the fear of the unknown and having to deal with things that have been in my life since I was a little child. But God has to get up in there and uproot the bitterness and the fear and the pain of your past to conquer what he's about to do in your future. I feel the anointing to preach today. Come on, give God a praise like we're going to walk into a new season. Are you with me now? Are you hearing me? Somebody say, I'm not going to let the enemy conform me anymore. Lock me down to a thinking pattern. Limitate me. Hold me back. Hold me down. I will not allow it. This is why when you're going to step into prosperity, listen, nobody gets into upper management, own your own business, really prosper in the things of God without being a great leader. If you think you're going to prosper with your little idea all by yourself, you're kidding yourself. If you're going to prosper, you have to have corporation. 
You have, to, you have to be a leader. You have to have people following you. You have to have people under you. Whether you're in a company and you want to rise, you're going to have to have people under you. Whether you want to be your own boss, you're going to have to have people under you. When you want to be effective in ministry, you got to have people under you. You have to be a leader. And a good leader is not a lid. A leader is a lifter. That means you got to deal with your insecurity. Because if you don't deal with it, you're going to hold everybody back. And you, everybody around you is going to be a low-level thinker. But if you're going to, come on, if you're going to rise up to what God has, you got to challenge that insecurity. Look at your neighbor and say, yeah. He's talking to somebody here. I don't know what it is. Sit down. Everybody's saying, I got these, everyone's going ready, ready. Look at your neighbor and say, hey, you got to deal with that. But I can't, Pastor. It's been with me all my life. That's a lie. You can do all things through Jesus Christ that strengthens you. How many know you can challenge every fear and conquer it? Some of you are the pastor, I'm a jealous, I'm jealous, I'm so jealous, and I know it's holding me back, and I'm just jealous, I'm just jealous. Insecurity. You could deal with that. Challenge that. You may go, you, when you challenge it, though, you may frighten you because you may end up somewhere in your childhood where somebody told you you're ugly or you're not pretty and nobody wants you. So you got to be very careful with insecurity, because in, especially in the lives of children, because children and young, young adults will, and young teenagers will let people do things to them because they're insecure. Because you're not pretty enough, you won't let me sleep with you. Oh, yeah, we're there. And that's all that happened to most of you here. And you haven't dealt with that kind of stuff yet. And it's still, you're carrying, you're 40 years old, but you still got that thinking, I'm ugly, I'm no, no, no. And what is, who told you that? Who told you you're naked, Adam? The devil told you so he could take advantage of you. But God says it's time to let the dead bury the dead, and you're not what you went through. You're my son, you're my daughter, and I'm lifting you up, and I'm about to lift your head to another level. Please sit down because I want to preach, really. Man, I'm out of time. Come on, David. Can I keep going? I, gotta, I, I really got to Man, I got to close. The, thir the, third the, the third level is body. Body. God wants you healed in your body. He took sickness. He took disease. He took the curse so you could be healed. Amen? And the fourth area he wants you to prosper is in your finance. He said, I give you the power to get wealth. Why would God give us power to get finances and not give it to us? Like, man, man, like, a, like, like, like what do you call, like, a, say you give somebody, like, ice cream. You're like, here's ice cream. I'm just kidding. Imagine if I told Josh, here, Josh, here's it. I'm just kidding. I mean, I'm going to be a terrible dad. How many know God doesn't do that? I give you power to get wealth. Nah, 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 just kidding. How many know God doesn't make mistakes or accidents? God said, I give you power to get wealth because God wants you financially wealthy. But you got to prosper in every area. I, I might have to do this next week a little bit. Because y'all are pulling on me every direction. And I, I don't know. There's a lot of need in here. Come on, somebody. I'm, I don't know. Somebody in Oregon watching or something. I don't know. Somebody in Tennessee and Texas <laughs> and Arkansas, Alabama. Come on, somebody. They're watching me all over the world right now. Miami. Come on, Miami. <laughs> New Zealand, Australia, mate, <laughs> India, 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 come on now, all over Asia, Asia, they're watching, so everyone's pulling everywhere, but I think this is really hitting a nerve, that God wants you to prosper in every area of your life, and be in health as your soul prospers, God's not going to sit there and go, I'm going to give you all this money and leave you all emotionally jacked up, no, he's going to heal you on the inside, remember this, remember this? Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. He starts working. He starts working on the inside. He's working on the outside. And one thing I noticed about God, and I didn't get to get to this. I might have to do this next week, really. And this is the key. What I noticed about God's prosperity, oh, I feel the Lord. It doesn't happen overnight. Sometimes it looks like it happens overnight. Like Joseph. You watch Joseph. If you just watched that one season of his life where he went from the pit to the palace, you're like, wow, look at the miracle of finance in his life. But that was a 17-year miracle. If you look at Abraham at the end, you go, oh, my God. But the, look, Abraham started, the Bible said he was buried under a rock. And God said, look to Abraham because that's where you come from. That's where you come from. Buried, some of you. 
you're going to have to go and serve God. And it's going to look like for a while nothing's happening. But if you just seek first the kingdom, the Lord's going to bless you more and more. You and your children. Sit down because I'm going to minister and then we're going to go. The Holy Spirit's telling me this. He told God's, God's people, God told them, I'm going to bless you little by little. And when the Lord first told me that in ministry, I was discouraged. I said, little by little, what does that mean? He says, lest the beast of the field consume you. He said, if I gave you too much, you couldn't handle it on so many levels. Let's just start with pride. If God blesses so many, that's why the Bible said, don't put a young man in leadership too early. Why? Because he gets the, the position and he gets arrogant and prideful. He can't manage the blessing. That's one of the ways we can't manage if we're unemotionally, we're not healthy, and God begins to prosper us, we'll start replacing God with things we're not ready for. It. Or maybe we don't have good management, and we can't handle it that way. So God has to do a work in our lives, and He begins to clean us out and prepare us. So when the blessings come, it's not just foreign, it's who we are. It's who we've become. Why is that important? Let me tell you why it's important. Because if the blessing is who I am now, and if it's all taken away, it doesn't matter. You could put me anywhere and it'll show up again. Because I'm because I'm a carrier of the blessing. Why? Because I have a kingdom mentality. You try you can take it away, but I'll be back bigger, better than ever. Because it's not from the outside in, it's from the inside out. If you have a kingdom mentality of prosperity, I want you to get on your feet and give God a shout of praise. Like the blessing of God is making you rich. Come on, one more time. Give God a shout of praise. Let's make this confession. Lift your hands to heaven and declare, in the name of Jesus, I repent for trying to replace God with things. I choose today to be happy. I will not wait till I get more to be happy. I choose to be happy today for this is the day that my lord has made and, oh lord the lord just spoke to me look at me look at me look at me look at me don't wait till you get a new house a new car till you get a husband a boyfriend a girlfriend a degree and then i'm somebody then i'm happy then i'm satisfied don't do that paul said i've been rich and i've been broke I've had millions of dollars in ministry and I've been in prison with nothing. But I've learned the secret of being content and happy whether I have a little or I have a lot. He said, if I have clothes and food, that's all I need to be happy. Why? And he said, with the next breath, because I can do it all through Jesus Christ that strengthens me. Don't you, don't you let a degree define your happiness. Don't you let a relationship define your happiness. Today is the day the Lord has made. And today you need to rejoice on your journey to your prosperity tomorrow. Come on, somebody give God a praise in here. Now let's make this confession today. Say, in the name of Jesus, through faith and patience, I am inheriting the promises of God. I sow. Therefore, I prosper. I begin to prosper. I continue prospering. And I become very prosperous. I seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all these things are added to me. I meditate in the Word of God day and night. Therefore, I make my way prosperous. Therefore, I have good success. I honor the Lord and I fear God and I declare the generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in my house and my righteousness endures forever. I delight in the word of the Lord and in his word I meditate day and night. Therefore, I'm like a tree. I'm planted by the rivers of water. I bring forth fruit in every season. In every season, I am fruitful and I multiply. My leaf never withers. And whatever I do, I prosper. Tell your neighbor, and the blessing of the Lord is making me rich and adding no sorrow. 
if you believe it, I dare you for 30 seconds to give God praise. Come on, give him praise. Somebody say, Thank you for watching Freedom. Don't forget to follow us on all of our social media platforms. Subscribe to us on YouTube and take Freedom on the go by downloading our SoundCloud app today. Once again, thank you for tuning in. Somebody say, Freedom! Come on, come on! Somebody say, Freedom!